Uh, today we're going to work on the super sexy zipper foot. Um, in the background there you can see some really nice projects with zippers in them and um, a few projects coming up. This one you can't really see the zipper foot but it's it's hidden under that little flap. But zippers aren't scary and we're doing uh, number four zipper foot today. Bernina has more than one zipper foot, but we'll address them when we get to that number. Um, so today I'm going to insert a zipper for you. I'm also going to talk about a few other places where a zipper foot could be your friend. And um, I'm going to give you a workaround on the Bernina. Some of them you can select the feet that um, you're using, which you should always do. It keeps you out of trouble. Um, in some of the machines with the automatic cutter, if you have the zipper foot on, the needle goes up, moves to the center, and then comes down on top of the zipper foot. If you haven't told the machine what foot you're using. So it's really important that if you have that type of machine, you do that. But there are a few models that recognize the feet, but you don't have that same option of picking where, which foot in the same way. So I'm going to show you a quick work around for some of your machines. Uh, for some of you, you'll just have to make it work um, with what you got. So here we are. Currently, we have a lovely number one on there. We're going to pop that off. Then I'm going to show you the number four foot. It's kind of a skinny little thing, and you can see it's kind of got those uh, two little divots out there. That's where the needle goes, so you can get nice and tight to the zipper. And there are, over the years, a few places where we all kind of preferred using our zipper foot. And you can see right now the needle is in the middle of the foot, and I'm going to show you a way to get around that. So today I'm using the uh, Bernina 480. So this screen, we're going to go to the home button. And you can see that lovely little dress form on the screen. That's our creative consultant. Creative consultant is going to help you. I'm going to select it. I've already pre-selected here cotton, but let's, let's go back. There's your fabric choices. Fine, medium, heavy wovens. Uh, denim, fat finger syndrome, knits, light, medium, heavy, there's um, specialty fabrics, leather, uh, terry, pile, quite a few things to choose from. Uh, we're working on essentially a medium woven today and we're going to select the zipper. And you can see it brings up all the suggestions here. So that's why it's called the Creative Consultant. It's going to help you make some decisions. And it's suggesting foot number four for the zipper. And if I confirm with the check mark, that's what I'm doing. Hopefully you saw that needle position move. And you'll see over here it's saying foot number four. And the needle moved so that the needle moved over on its own. That's to keep it from hitting the foot. So why is that important? Well, you can't sew through the foot, obviously. But when you're working with the zipper, there are times when you're going to want to be as close as you can to those teeth or some variation of it. And you can see I can move the needle position still. I can override that. But we have a little bit of room there. We can be a little bit tighter. Um, in the zipper itself, that's just preference. How far apart do you how how far do you want to be from the teeth? Uh, in the one of my quick little tips after, I'll show you why you might move that. This now is just a decorative choice, artistic choice.
but there's a practical choice later. So um, what I've done already, most clothing has a 5 8 seam allowance. I've stitched this with a 5 8 seam allowance. Hopefully you can see there on screen, I've got a little tie off here at the top of the seam. Then I have a nice big fat stitch, easy to remove later. Then I did a couple teeny tie offs where I want the zipper to end. And then a regular seam 2.5 here. This was about a one for this just few stitches here. And then number six stitch length for the basting. I'm just going to do a short zipper for you guys in the interest of time. Um, what I'd like to do is what we've seen before, uh, old school. We used to take the zipper, we would center it on this tape, we would machine baste it in, and if you don't like machine basting it in, we may have pinned it in. Uh, lots of pins, well, I find that a lot of blood ensues. So we have uh, something called two-sided base tape. It's a wash away tape. Uh, the packaging has changed over the years. Uh, the one that we sell the most of, carry is called Wonder Tape. Comes in a little tiny quarter inch width. And what happens is it's sticky unless it's dried out. So do keep it in a Ziploc bag. But what we've done with it is we'll take the sticky tape and apply it to the zipper tape. And this one's a bit dry on the end from being open in the box. But I'm just going to apply a little bit because I'm not doing the full length zipper. Tear that off. Then um, just using your fingernail, you can kind of push it on. You can use, um, sometimes I'll use something to burnish it in so it's sticking a little better. A wooden press could be your friend here. Then as with anything sticky, you know, getting the tape off can be your next issue, but we'll peel that paper tape off. And then that sticky tape We'll center that zipper on that seam allowance, on our basted seam, and then kind of burnish that on. You can use your finger, use your a tool, whatever you like. All right. And what that did for me is it's going to hold that zipper in place without all the lumps and bumps of the pin. So I'm just feeling right here to make sure that the head can kind of see it peeking through the basting is right there in the middle. And then I get to decide where I want to stitch, how close I want to be. Uh, I'm going to go for a fairly wide stitch here. I'm going to sew to the outside edge of this zipper foot. And normally what we do is keep this straight edge of the zipper foot up against the bump of the zipper. But what I'm going to do, because I haven't basted the two sides in like I was taught in home ec, I'm going to open the zipper. So I've opened that zipper. because I, you can't sew around that big heavy head. And what you might be more difficult to see is the zipper tape edge is up against that foot. I can feel it and I, I can see it. Chances are it's not that clear for you on the screen. You might have to take my word for that a little bit. But I'm gonna sew a fairly fat top stitch here for the zipper. I could go skinny on this side, but, you know, in the interest of 
choices. I'm going to do a fat one today because I can. So, uh, normal stitch length. You keep the zipper foot riding against the teeth that you can't see but you can feel through. And in theory, that's nice and straight. You'll forgive me if it's not today. All of you are watching. Maybe you make me nervous. So I've got to a mark I made here so I would know where to stop. It's just a quick fold in the fabric. Then I'm going to turn and I'm going to stitch straight across. Sorry, when you make this pivot here. Before you make, when you make that pi first pivot there, close the zipper then. Then one, two, three, four, five, turn. And that'll give you five stitches from here and five stitches to there. And that's how you keep that looking even. And then keeping the zipper up against the zipper tape. Now here we come. We're getting to that big, thick, heavy head. And this is where um, unattractiveness will ensue for sure. So what I do is you get in here and you pop those basting stitches right now. They're super easy to bust apart. And we open this a little bit past the foot. Hopefully see, I've opened that basting up and then get a hold of that zipper head and pull it behind the zipper foot and then you can carry on nice and straight so you know then you would take out the rest of this basting and then you have a lovely zipper center lap is what this one is called there's some great instructions out there. You might have an old sewing book that has nice instructions for doing center lap, side lap, all those variations. Uh, if any of you have issue coming down, sewing across, and then going up, if you happen to have something that sews better where you come down, and you sew to the middle here, you can put a bar tack at the bottom there then you can come down from this side, pivot, bar tack this way. There's more than one way to get here. And if anyone who thinks that that bar tacking there will look funny, take a look at some of the clothes you own, especially if you're uh, owning a pair of jeans and you're still wearing them, take a look, bar tacks everywhere. The four zipper foot also comes as a 4D for the Bernina machines that have the D mechanism. Uh, that's the seven and the eight series. It's the same foot, it looks a bit different. It's, it looks a lot bigger, but you can get as close as I got here because you see that it's got a bigger hole here for the nine millimeter. So it's quite easy to get a nice tight stitch there. And there's the opening for the D mechanism. Be sure you engage that. If you have a foot that has a D on it, be sure you engage the D mechanism. So, and if you happen to have a seven series that doesn't have the ability to check um, the foot that you've put on there, do use the little workaround I just gave you. And I'll pull back a little bit, give you a little wider view. Um, if you have a machine that has a D foot, this is a quilted fabric. And I've got a zipper inserted in there. I've got top stitching in two places, really close to the fold over here, and a little further away. These are applied quite differently, and you'll probably catch that in a different class. But if you're doing velvety stuff, polar fleece, squishy stuff, quilted stuff, 
The D foot is your friend if you happen to have a machine with a D mechanism. So, uh, I'm not sure if most of you know, but if you have, use the zipper bigger than you need. And once it's in and you're done, you can go in and cut it off as long as it's the um, nylon teeth. And then, ooh, a lot of people say that's quite a wasteful thing of a zipper. But I'm going to tear that apart. And then I'm going to show you half a tape. You know what this looks like? It reminds me of piping. Look. I had a lovely cream color zipper that looked beautiful with this fabric. And I had some free piping. Is the zipper that looked the best with this fabric? I had something like a 24 inch zipper. <laughs> so I had a good chunk of free piping, which I inserted into the seams on the front of this little bag. It's super cute. This is a Terry Atkinson bag. I'm sure that we have the patterns in stock. Let me see. Uh, this one. Atkinson Designs, Zippy Strippy. See the piecing? Great pattern. And Terry has a fabulous way of putting zippers in. Well worth the purchase of any of her bag patterns. If you want some smaller bags, Cash and Carry. This one's super cool. This one has a little pocket. I've made that pocket with vinyl so that if you were still taking the bus, your bus pass fits in that pocket, but you don't have to take it in and out. You can see it through the clear pocket. This bag here is a dual bag. And so if you're traveling, you can have Canadian funds on one side and uh, other country dollars, euros, francs, whatever, wherever you're traveling on the other side, or you can have dollars in one side, paper dollars, and change in the other side. It's, that's a fabulous little bag, super fun to make. And again, Terry's got the best way of finishing those zips. If you take a little look at the end here, look how tidy this is, you guys. Still got a beautiful zipper in there. Clean end here and clean end there. Well worth the price of any Terry Atkinson bag pattern. But let's talk about some of the places in past where Zipperfoot was our friend. We have other choices these days, but you know, um, Bernina feet are awesome. Maybe you can own them all, maybe not. Remember this gigantic piping? Well, it's it can be not your friend, so let's just take a look at that. Um, I have no piping feet cording feet in the store. This thing's as big around as my finger. Hopefully in scale you can see it's quite big. So if I wanted to make piping out of that, you know, you would take the cord, you would wrap it in your fabric, and then how in the world would you sew that into somewhere? Well, the first one, obviously, we can put this, tuck the zipper foot in nice and tight here. And I'm just going to give myself a little more seam allowance. But the first pass, you shouldn't be too tight to the tape. You should be not too close. I'm thinking that one's maybe given my seam allowance. Not quite far enough. But this is mostly here. It base, it just gonna baste it together for you, really. That's all I want. Because when I go to put this in my seat cushions or wherever I want, I'm going to switch the needle position on this zipper. And then you can see, now I'm on the tight side. And I can actually move just clearing it up. So that's uh, almost to the far right, but not quite. I'm going to take that out. But if I sewed it into my garment, see out here I've got a bit of a baste. 
that'll hold it together. This could be the position I sew it into my garment with or my patio cushions. Because, you know, if we're not going out to patios this summer, you may as well make a nice one. So I've moved the needle position one more position to the far right. And I want to show you how awesome that would be. This was position number four. This was position number five. By you could even baste here and then insert here. You're going to get a nice tight fit and you won't see that stitching. So unfortunately in our early days we would sew this first line of stitching here and then we would try to sew here into the seam allowance and it just wouldn't go. It wasn't happy. So Make your piping one needle position looser, and then when you insert it, go one position tighter or as tight as you can go up against the actual cording that you make your piping from. Um, we've got some other feet that are fun for making big, huge decorative piping, but you know, that's another day, another number. Hopefully you're here for that one too. Um, so be safe, be kind, and be calm. Above all things, be calm. Go get your zipper foot. Try some stuff. I'm telling you, it will be better. Um, and if you want a good reference, the big book of feet. Thanks, everyone.